You're listening to Marriage Takeover with Eric and Tamika Thompson, helping to enrich your marriage. Hey, people! Hey, hey, How are you guys doing? What's going on? (laughs) Welcome, welcome, welcome to Marriage Takeover. We are so excited to have you here with us. Yes, we are excited (laughs) to be here and to have you here with us. Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started with prayer. (laughs) Go ahead on. God, we love you. We honor you. We magnify you, God. We thank you even for this opportunity. We thank you, God, for the WBGR Gospel Network. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity just to be able to come before your people, God. Share nuggets, God. Share love, God. Share grace, God. Share your word. Share your biblical principles Uh for the couples, for the marriages, to build up the marriages, God. To be able to give them what they need, God. To strengthen them, to guide them, to cover them, God. We're asking, Lord, that you would breathe over this broadcast, that you would have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. God, that you would be magnified, that you would be glorified. God, that your oil will spill over into today's broadcast. Yes. God, We love you, we honor you, and we magnify you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 As you see that God is doing new things here, and it is awesome. It is awesome. Go ahead, go ahead. What you getting ready to say something? No, so I was gonna say, so we wanna welcome our WBGR Gospel Network listeners. We are new to the platform. You're probably trying to figure out who the heck are these people? Who are these folks? What is going on? <laughs> Listen, we are marriage takeover. Yes. I'm Tamika. I'm Eric. And we have been married for 21 years. And one of the things that God helped us to be able to do on this particular platform was to be able to build marriages. About 11 years ago, we were on the brink of divorce. And in that, we were faithfully serving the church, faithfully kind of trying to honor God and everything that we were doing, but our marriage was crumbling to the pieces. Mm. And so one of the things that we decided that we were going to do was, if God bless us, if he breathed over us, he said, you know what? Talk about the marriages. Tell them about your stories. Tell them about your transparency. Tell them what you went through. So Mm. we talk about sex. We talk about porn. We talk about separation. We talk about hate. We talk about all of that stuff that you wouldn't think that we would talk about. All right? So So we're coming to you live. Excited to be a part of WBGR. If you don't mind, I'm going to have the correct wife on this because this is something that has been ordained by God. Trust Absolutely. Because understand this. There's one thing that I would rather be at home chilling, watching the Dallas Cowboys play the Rams right now but because of what God has done and what he has brought us out of he didn't want to keep our testimony to ourselves right and so we're gonna go ahead and jump on jump right on into it because one thing I'm we're just gonna go and pick up where we left off because in last year you have to go back to look at December of last year we talked about vision and your vision, you being, the, you know, you being the head of your home, breaking down your vision or doing your vision for your house and opening, you know what I'm saying, on where God is taking you or where God, or what God is doing, you know what I'm saying, are looking to do in you all's lives in the following or coming year. And so with it being at the end of another year, oh my 2019 God, is 2019 has come, has come to an end. Right, and so right. it is awesome because... Being at this platform was part of vision, was God, you take us into the next dimension on where you want to do. And I tell you, it happened with October where the door opened. Door opened. And you know me, I don't I don't just jump at stuff, but God has says, look, I have set before you an open door. And so when you begin to look at vision. And you begin to work towards vision because right, right. without a vision, the, people, the perish. people perish. And so the thing is, as being the head of your household, you want to have a vision because that lets you know that you're going to always be moving forward. Right. And then it's important as a couple or as a marriage to have a vision mm-hmm. because here's the reason why there there were times even in, in our marriage where we were just going, 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 but we were just running in circles, not trying to understand why we were running in circles, not really having that blueprint of where we were taking our family or what we were doing. And so one of the things that we stopped and did just what about 10 
Yeah, about 10 years ago. About 10 years ago now. 12 years. 12 years. Okay, so 12 years ago now, we just decided, listen, we need to be able to come together as a family, just how some people, they get together and they do resolutions. Well, this is not a resolution. The difference between a resolution and a vision is that God is being able to give you a blueprint and he's speaking some things over your family and where he's trying to guide you and lead you so that you can be in alignment with what his will is for your entire marriage, for your entire family, for your entire household. And so when he does that, what you do is you get into a vision mode not mm. resolution mode because this is a resolution you may or may not finish that thing if it's a resolution you may or may not conquer that thing because you say okay well listen i got this resolution how many of us <laughs> every <on> year <laughs> we decide I, hey i'm going to the gym i'm gonna get this membership i'm losing some weight I'm i have a resolution <laughs> to drop 10 pounds yeah right this and, then, and then by the end of the year <laughs> i done picked up it, 10 right you <laughs> not picked up 10 I done in reverse, I done stayed the same. <laughs> so it's a matter of when you're doing the blueprint. A resolution is something that you may not be sold to. A resolution is something that you may not be locked and loaded into because there's really not a whole lot of substance behind it. Come on. It's just something that you're saying, hey, listen, I might do this. I might not do this. It sounds good. This is what I want to do going into the new year. But as a matter of fact, what you probably need to be doing is seeking God for the vision because once he gives you that vision, then what happens is you have no choice but then to move in that alignment into that flow. Yes. And then when he breathes over it, it's a blessing it. to the entire household. Yes, that's the thing, man, when he breathes over it. Because it's an awesome thing to do one thing, but then because see it's one thing, how can you how can you how you put this? It's like God can speak something into your house. Mm-hmm. Now, what God has spoken is now should be now a part of vision. Because now you're moving towards something. Right, right. You, you understand what I'm saying? And so in moving towards something, guess what? God is faithful and just to do what? Bring it to pass. Bring it to pass. But if if but if I if I'm not seeking God on behalf of myself or seeking God on behalf of the family, where am I going? Right. So even when you look at marriage, even when you look at marriage takeover, God, what are you doing with this ministry? Right. Because uh, you know, there's a lot of other stuff I could be doing. I'm just right. being honest, but because but when you have a servant's heart, right, right, when right, you have right, a servant's right. heart, only thing I know is that whatever you do for God, that's what's gonna that's last. That's gonna last. And so when you have, when you are yeah. being a visionary of your home, you know you can take your own house farther than where your parents took yours. Now, who should be the one to establish the vision? Whose role is it? To be able to establish that vision. Whoa, we getting into the roles again. But if you <laughs> just if briefly, you, if you ask me, only if you're asking me, since she asked me the question, <laughs> if you ask me, I believe, I believe that the husband should be the visionary of the house. Why? Because it falls into the order of God. God's he's he let us know head of woman is man, the head of man is Christ, and head of Christ is is God right? So if it flows from the head down, so that means that if I am in order with God, that means that that whatever that has dripped on me is gonna saturate her. Come on, I don't think you, I don't think you hearing me, but it's gonna saturate, and that's the thing because when you begin to move in sync, in step, one step. Going to the same direction. Uh -huh. So if I lean left, you lean left. If I'm leaning right and you leaning right, that means that God is moving. Why? Because now you are unified. Right. And see, the thing is, a lot of things about the couples is that we are not unified. Why? Because how can I have my wife to submit to the vision that I have if I'm not if I'm not submitted to God? Right. Because a lot of people a lot of people misunderstand that even unto you, I still have to submit. Right. So even unto her, you have to submit. So I look at it, I think it's in Psalms. Y'all got on tip me somewhere else. Ah. <laughs> I, I think not in Psalms, but I think it's in, in Corinthians. Corinthians. Well, I think it's in Corinthians. I'm at, let me, I'm at search. I'm at search in a second. Okay. I'm at search. We'll go to the commercial break. <laughs> but, but when you but when you look at it, it says husband. Uh, he says uh, it says husband love your wives as Christ loved the right, church. Right. Right. But then right. it says but then it says but then it says wife 
submit yourself to your to own your husband. husband right? So when you look at it, I look like this coming out of the King James Version, is that when you submit, when you, it's like you're submitting to God keeps your wife in love with you. Ooh. And so, That's good. But okay. when you, okay. but if you, because now the wife is going to already love you. Because right. that's just how this is how the woman's just been created, if you will. Right. But if you submit to your, if you submit unto God, it will cause your wife to love you right. by by what you're doing. Because now you're just abiding. You're you are abiding by what God has already set up and directed. Right. And so then now your wife will have no problem with. Submitting to right. her own husband. Right. So you have to understand this thing when it becomes a part of vision. Right. I don't I hate to stop you right there, but <laughs> but this thing is getting good already. <laughs> getting good, getting good. Well, we're gonna go. So we we want to make sure that we're backing this up with biblical principles, right? Yeah, I, so I gotta find the scripture. In real quick. Habakkuk, right? It's Habakkuk two, two, three, and four. Uh huh. And what they tell what what Habakkuk say? Habakkuk say <laughs> in chapter two, verse three. Uh, it says, "No, nah, we're gonna go to verse two. You gonna okay? Go to two. Habakkuk two and two. It says, "Then the Lord answered me. Look at one first. He said, "I will stand my watch and set myself uh -huh. on the rampart and watch and watch to see what he will say to me." And what I will answer when I am corrected. Right. So Habakkuk is saying, he's already saying, listen, I'm going to be in the position in order to hear from God and talk with God. Right. So therefore, if I have done wrong, because you got to look at this is Old Testament. So now, remember, Christ have not come yet. So I still have to wait on the day of atonement. Right. But if I am in the place that God would have me to be, meaning if I am... If I am in the position, if I have submitted, submitted myself totally to God, wife is taking notes here. Taking I think notes. she's trying to get my attention. Oh, no, 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 no. You good. You good. You good. You good. But, um, but here I'm in the place uh -huh. because he says, and I will and watch to see what he will say. So now I'm already in the place to receive what God has to give. Right. Right. And then say, and what I will answer. When I am corrected. Then he says, then the Lord answered me in verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Make it plain on the tables right. that he may run who reads it. Look at it. He said that the Lord answered me right. and said. So that means Habakkuk went to God and asked a question. Right. Woo! So that means uh, oftentimes we stay stuck or we don't get a word because we don't ask God's questions. Why? Because somebody asked, somebody told you as you were coming up, don't ask God why. Why not? Right. It's he's right, a creator. Right, why not? Right, right. Why is my wife acting this way? Why is my husband acting this way? Why am I children acting this way? But he says what? Then the Lord answered me and said. Write the vision. Write the vision. Make it plain. Make it plain on the table. Yep. What I have shown you or what you desire to do, write it. Because see, when you look at it, there is no specific instruction. Because why? He already knew Habakkuk's heart. Right. <laughs> right. So if you're going to write the vision, he's telling you, write it is. Right. He said, write it. You write it. Why? Because you already know, because you have the desire in your heart. I don't care if your desire is to be more one with your spouse. Or it's, I don't care if it's you and your spouse both desire to, to reach um, what, uh, entrepreneurship. If you and your spouse desire to shoot, purchase your first home, right. I, it doesn't matter. Right, I, right, right, check right. this out. I don't even listen because oftentimes we forget that God still flows even through the miracles. Right. And even though, so if you, yo, you know, you might not be able to have a child. Put that in a vision. Why? Because God can still open a door. Right. Oh my God today. Right. I don't know what he is doing, but I got to let go. I better say something. <laughs> 
So no, 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 no. So that's all really good. So one of the things that I wanted to be able to identify was, and it says that make it plain upon the tables. Plain. So when you make it plain upon the tables, what happens is that's something that you get to see. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go and you see the tables and you're going past it every single day, when every time you go to the kitchen, you're seeing the vision. Every time you go and you go to the bathroom, you're seeing the vision. When you leave the house, you're seeing the vision. When you come back into the house, you're seeing the vision because what it does is it is embedding that thing inside in you. Uh -huh. of you so when you see it you don't get discouraged when you see it it's a reminder when you see it it's like oh yeah god this is something that i have before you you come on now come and on that's now. the difference between the vision and a and resolution. resolution come because on now the resolution means that i have to do something come on the resolution means that it's all my working Ooh. that's why a lot of people can't lose weight at the end of the year come on here because it's a resolution it's a resolution should have made me stood but up. I'm going to sit back now. we are looking to God for the vision, God, this is something that I have before you. you. Uh -huh. So, God, when you give me what I need to be able to do, when you give me what I need to be able to yes. say, what happens is you come from that place of, okay, God, I can no longer do this in and of my own self. I can no longer do this in and of my own flesh. Uh -huh. So, now I am now depositing that thing and I'm giving it over to you and right. I'm saying, hey, God, this is for you. Now, if you, if you don't speak to me, I'm not going to be able to do it. Come on now. If, if you don't give me the words, I'm not going to be able to do it. If you don't give me the vision, I'm not going to be able to do it. If you don't give me the insight, I'm not going to be able to do it. If you don't give me the wisdom and the guidance, I'm not going to be able to do it. Yes. So as he yes. gives it to you, then what happens is then you are then able to go forth and accomplish that thing because God has set something up for you. Come on. See, I, I like that part, right? I like that part because... When she said that you put it before him. And that's the things we don't put stuff before God. We just make it, oh, it sounds good. Right. But because the thing is, because then we look at it as being a resolution. Right. But it's one thing about vision. Vision is something that you don't lose focus of. Right. Right. Vision is something that you don't lose focus of. Right. Why? Because it stays in the front. Right. Only if you desire for it to stay in the front. Right. And so the thing is, is that when you make it plain on the tables, when you make it plain on the tablets and other translations, right. that means that however I see this thing, it stays in front of me because it is my target place that I need to hit. Right. But... Yeah. And our whole family does the vision. So it's not, it's just, not just one. one. It's not just the adults. Our children do it. You know, we have a son in college. We have a daughter in elementary school. Everybody takes part. And we sit and we watch God and we see how he unfolds different things in our lives. My daughter had a vision last year, actually. She wanted to be able to make straight A's. What? Come on here So now. while it was a, a course and it was a journey, there were some things that she had to do differently right. to make sure she was in alignment with what she wanted to be able to do. Right. So she laid it before God, and then God was able to deposit and give her certain things. There were certain things she had to do in turn as she was honoring God, and now she's straight A student. Right, straight A, because so, it, it was it all started with it all started, started with, with vision. vision, and so and that's the thing when you come to when you come to married life, you know, oftentimes that we don't know how to speak life into our spouse, right. Because now I, I have to forget about myself and I have to think about you. Right. Just by saying, hey, I know I'm leaning back too much. I done got real relaxed. I forgot <laughs> I'm, I'm not at home. I, you know I me, mean? I get comfortable real good. Hey. But, but when you say, hey, this, say, hey, do you know what God has put in you is awesome? Right. But see, we don't know how to speak life because we have been tormented so much to where we can't even re receive the life that God even speak in his word. Right, right, right. And it's and it's, sometimes it's a challenge in marriage because what happens is we are so selfish. We're two separate beings. Come on. And so a lot of times it's our selfishness gets in the way. Uh huh. And so what we want to make sure that we're mindful of is not only just making sure that it's a matter of hey, I really want this to come to pass. When you say that you really want it to come to pass and you're honoring God, one of the first things that we have to do is making sure that we can submit ourselves unto yes, God. Yes, yes. Because then it removes the pride, it removes the selfishness, it removes all those different barriers and layers that we do have that prevent us from being able to get to the end goal. Mm, I have a question. And we get ready to go to a commercial, commercial break. Commercial break after this. And so... 
I'm going to ask the question okay. when we come back from commercial. you going to ask a break? Then I'm, 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 I'm going to ask the question so, when we come back so from commercial So while you're listening, break. and I know we have some viewers that are on our marriage takeover and our sites, I want you to join us over on the WBGR Gospel Network Facebook page so that we can kind of interact. Because what we want to do is we want to hear what your vision is. Yeah. Let's hear and let's talk about those different things on that side of the house. All right? All right. We're getting ready to go to commercial break. And we'll see you guys as soon as we get back. Join us for the Marriage Takeover Retreat happening on Saturday, February 15th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Your investment is only $99 where the theme is not easily broken and we're breaking generational curses. You can register at marriagetakeover.com. This year we are going to have Jay and Trish Cameron, Milo and Alicia Briscoe, Eric and Tamika Thompson, and you don't want to miss it. It's going to be right here in the DC metropolitan area in Southern Maryland. Go to again, marriagetakeover.com to register and for more details. Again, marriagetakeover.com. Don't miss out. Today's show is being brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash marriage takeover and browse through some of the unmatched selections of the audiobooks and programs that they offer. Download a title and start listening all for free. All right, it's that easy. Just go to audibletrial.com slash marriage takeover. All right. All righty. <laughs> we hey, are back in full action. We are, and we are back. So what's the question? So what's the question? The, what's the question? So now, the question? remember in January, I asked her a question. Uh-oh. I <laughs> asked her a question. And this is what I want you to ask your spouse. What do I hold you back from? Okay. And what do I push you towards? And so... Her question, her answer to me was, <laughs> it was, <laughs> well, you hold me back from actually reaching what she wants to reach. And I was like, huh, okay, do you, do you remember this? Vaguely, because I know how your mind go. Yeah, that's going to race That's like when you said you asked me back in January, I was like, uh-oh. Oh, yeah, I know, <laughs> her mind going, because she already into January right. 2020. <laughs> but, because when you have self-reflection, because the thing is, is that, if you have vision and your spouse have vision or if you have if you have vision for your for your spouse and you have effectively communicated that now what part do I play in order for you to reach the vision so it's just like just like with my daughter when she had to when, and when she put in her vision to make straight A's what did I do I made sure that she stayed on top of her books. Right. Why? Right. Because that's where it says when you write it on the when you write it on the tables or on the tablets and other translations that what he said that they that read it shall run with it. Right. So if it's your vision, I'm the one that have read it, and now I'm doing what? I'm running with it. But oftentimes, because we can see you coming close to your vision, guess who steps in the way? Jealousy and envy. Right. So Come now I enemy. now I tend to be a hindrance <laughs> right. to the vision. So that's why I wanted to make sure I want to make sure that I'm not holding you back from achieving what you have what you have set before yourself and what God has set. Because when you look in when you look in Proverbs, the Proverbs Proverbs say, I'm gonna paraphrase it, I'm gonna find the scripture and give it to you. But he's but he says that basically if basically what is it that you want to achieve he said that he's that he will establish your steps right so right. if you say what you want to achieve you have put it before god guess what he is going to establish your steps meaning what that he is going to make sure that you stay on the straight now in order to achieve it in order to achieve it right. because if it lines up with purpose with god because oftentimes our vision lines up with purpose with God. Right. So we, we oh my God today. So why do I feel like I'm all, I know you got something to say. No, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't. And can. so I had to ask the question because I did not want to stop her from achieving what God do. Why? Because God would begin to deal with me. Right. If I'm stopping her 
from where God is taking her. Because you have to understand this. Because if he, if I am stopping her now, am I in order or am I out of order? Right. And then that leads me to a question. So let's say, let's hey, y'all, this sounds great. This sounds good. But what if my husband just doesn't have a vision? He doesn't know where to start. What? Shut the front door. <laughs> so, so, so to be able to help that couple that's in that situation, for example, we were in the bank the other day. And young lady, we were um, talking to a minister, and so she was like, "Hey, listen, do y'all do? Um, how do y'all handle a couple that don't know Christ? That doesn't know Christ." And so Eric had to kind of pause and situate. You know, he you was kind of pondering. You get your, no, it's not a ponder. What were you doing? I have to get. You have to get your words right. So it when, takes me some time. So you feel me? She, so he was like, so say the question again. So when she asked it again, she was like, so how do you deal with, you know, couples that you, you know, coach or minister or counsel that don't believe like they who aren't saved? And so I said, well, I approach this from a biblical standpoint, period. Right. That's so what she said that we're not going to force our belief system on you. However, what we do is we stand on the principles in the word of God. And if you want to change then that's something between you and God. Right. But from our particular standpoint, it's a biblical standpoint because it works. Right. Like anything with Christ is going to last. Anything with Christ, it works if you do the work. Right. And so I said that to say, as we were going into the, the process of what if my husband doesn't know how to do the vision? What if he doesn't, what if my husband's not saved? I'm saved, I believe. But what if he he's not saved? He doesn't know how to do this. I, he doesn't know how to walk into that. So with that, we want to bless you. Oh, so, bless oh, you, want me to, you want me to have this? <laughs> See, this is this is the thing right here, and it's because when, like I said, that if the woman, uh huh, all right, if the woman is lined up with God, uh huh, but the husband is not. The scripture says that the wife sanctifies the husband. Right. And how do we sanctify Be the husband? Because, see, the thing is, is that we look at the shortcomings of the husband, but we don't see what God has already destined for them. Woo! So Watch out now. Key. So Watch out. Even as Can I take my jacket off? Can take I, jacket off? Oh, Lord, take I get to get off. loose. <laughs> I get to get loose. Woo! So even, Woo! I got my even, cut. Yeah, I got my shirt <laughs> off. Now, let's take even, over. So, Gun City. Yeah. So even with that, right? Yes. Uh, I think I'm about to lose my thought process. No, 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 no. So even we with have that, too much as, fun. You, I apologize. as you have that vision, as you have that blueprint, as you're doing that, don't just go off that vision and writing things out for your family or for your spouse based off of what you physically see right now. Come on now. Go off of it based off of what God is telling you, off of what God is showing you for where you guys are going. Mm -hmm. And look at that and work that out as if it's in the now. Right. And see, that's where, and that's where, that is where we do, I'm trying to make sure I say this right. That is where we misunderstand faith. The scripture says in Hebrews 1, no, Hebrews 11, it says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Right. But, and it's the evidence of things not seen. So if, if you're saying that it's something hoped for, so that means you're telling me if I'm hoping in this, that means in me, it already has a physical presence. Right. So if I have faith, if I have working faith, if I that that's different. A lot right. of people got faith, but it ain't working faith. <laughs> but when you have, you have working one. faith, <laughs> working faith means the hope that I see is what I see in the now. Right. That's why he says that now faith is the substance. Because right. if it was that now, then how could the elders obtain a good report? If you look at that's in that's in that's in verse two of Hebrews eleven. Right. So if the elders didn't have the hope, then how could they have a good report? How can they obtain a good report? So therefore, if you're saying that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, that means that my working faith see my husband now being a visionary. Right. Because if he's not a visionary at this present moment, my hope and glory is that he is a visionary. Because right. now it's just that his present self has to meet up. With the manifestation of God's glory. It's the hope of glory. Oh, right. My God today. And, and I feel so, like running. And so I'm the practical one, y'all. So I'm like, yeah, that sound good. It sound good. <laughs> but when we sitting up at the dinner table and he acting a fool, then what? <laughs> because see, now. So, no, 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 no. 
but oh, even, I thought you want me to run on that one. Oh, Go ahead. I mean, you, you know I'm feeling good. You can. I'm feeling good. You can, it's, but, it's, but when you do that, you have to know that even in that particular moment, it's still for you to affect and to work out the change that God is doing in you. Right. Right. That's how you combat that because I'm telling it ain't it ain't always easy. But that, but see that's <laughs> the thing because you know the one thing is that when you begin to pray yeah, about it, go and get it off me, baby. Get it. Ooh, get it. Get it. Uh, get it. Oh my bad. I'm sorry. I forgot what it was. But, but I love you. We, we got people in the studio looking at me like I'm crazy. But God is good. But listen. But but that's the thing because do you know? That that's how you begin to affect change in you. Right. Right. Because you Is can't that, stay focused on your spouse. No. Nah. That's where I missed it. Like I said, we've been married 21 years, going on uh, 22 you years. You was focused on me? I was focused on every time he made me mad. Tell the truth. Okay. God <laughs> fixing. Tell every time he, to tell every, the time he every time he got <laughs> sideways and slick up at the mouth and I Watch wanted, out. and I wanted to chin check him. Do I look like I, do I look like I get slick? <laughs> okay. I don't get slick. <laughs> I was like, God, if you don't fix him, if you don't do this work, I gotta work for him. Woo! <laughs> ah, so, glory, just, glory, can glory. Can I just be honest, right? <laughs> it's transparency because that was where I was and forgot to be able to bring me out of where we were. I'm telling you, we standing on a miracle. Don't break the they don't kick us out here now. Sorry, to yeah. We are working on a miracle when God breathed over us. When you talking about somebody selfish or somebody hateful, I was like, God, Ooh, baby. Ain't... You telling the whole truth, ain't you? God, <laughs> like what really? <laughs> Real something I, like back. <laughs> I could have God. I told y'all she was a thug. Go ahead. And but it was a matter of him being able to work on me and the moment I changed my focus from him to me. Come on. It was a matter of God being able to pour into me, for God to be able to breathe upon me. And when he did that, it was no longer a matter of me just trying to to figure him out. Right, it was right, like, right, God, right, make right. me better. I want to be better. See, but that's and so when thing. God was making me better, I was able to be a better wife. I was mm. able to be a better mother. I was able to be a better friend. I was able to be a better companion. I was able to have empathy. So <laughs> when you're talking about make me better... But what about that person that already thinks that they're the best thing walking? So then that's the part of when you get closer to God, he has this funny thing of showing you yourself in the mirror. Ooh, Lord. And when you see yourself in the mirror and you're like, oh, I guess I really don't have it all together. I guess <laughs> I guess I am a little kind of ugly on the outside. I guess I am a little not put together. I guess I don't do that. And then when you see yourself in the mirror and it's plain as day, it's a matter of... Dang, that yeah. is me. Oh my god. And so goodness. when you see yourself, then you want to change. Come on. Come on. Cause what's that? I think is is it James 23? James 1 23? <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah. Where it says uh 23 says, For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face right. in a glass. I'm telling you, <laughs> I've been there. I can't tell you nothing about where I've never been. Come I on. have been there thinking I had it all together. I knew everything. I, oh, all that stuff. All that stuff. And you know, you look yourself and you be like, yeah, I'm cute. Yeah, can't nobody tell you nothing. Somebody say, oh, you look nice. I know. Uh, yeah. that, that was I'm Literally, telling you that, that was, was, her. Was, no, no, that, was her. that was me that was her I know and so when <laughs> God, hold on wait a minute you know <laughs> but when God <laughs> gets a hold of you Whoop. I'm telling you something about that yeah. heart check yes it yeah, ain't even a chin true. check you know you sometimes if I can chin it's the heart check and when you stop that up. circumcision of your heart come on now there's nothing you can do to get away from it wow nothing oh wow Ooh, that's jam. <laughs> oh, jam. <laughs> but that, but that's but see, but that's the thing. So even when you begin to look at, when you begin to even write your vision, man, that right there even becomes a leap of faith. Because do you know that when God began to open up some doors, you just can't walk through the door the way that you are now. Right. That means right, that God right. is gonna. God has to grow you. Right. In order so that one, that when the vision comes, though it tarry, wait for it. But when the vision surely come, ooh, ooh, when yes. the vision surely come, guess what? You will be in the right position to receive. Right. And be able to walk through the door that he has set up for you. And you reminded me. So even in that, even if you go to Habakkuk. 
Habakkuk 2 and 4. So even in that verse 4, it tells you that the vision is going to come at an appointed time. An appointed time. So mm -mm. if it doesn't come... Hold on, wait a minute. I'm in a different translation. I forgot. No, go ahead. That's in a different translation. Uh, no, I'm in a different translation. Okay. Go ahead. So if, if it doesn't come in a month... 3. Verse 3. Verse okay, three. sorry. Verse 3. So if it doesn't come in a month, wait for it. Don't you give up hope on what God has already showed you. Look! I'm look! Look! This is vision right here. We are standing... Listen! We are standing in vision. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting excited. You're getting excited. Because it did not happen. Just don't get on the table. I'm then. not going <laughs> to go. Okay, I can't do it. I'm going to tell this stuff. Praise the Lord. Please, I want you to get out of here. But what I'm saying is, is that when you put vision and allow God to do it. Right, right. It, it took us from January holding on to God just open doors. Because what, Lord, if you want us to reach more, then open doors. Right. And so here at the beginning, we try to reach more on our own. Right. But you got to know that some things is literally just a God thing because in some things, God has already equipped us right. to reach certain things. Right. But in some things, it takes us to humble ourselves and allow God to do what he's going to do. Right. But when we got in position, yes. the doors open for us to reach for us or for the ministry to reach more. So you're standing in what is the appointed time, and the appointed time happened at the end of the year. Right. So you got to understand what God is doing. So even though if I don't, even if it does, even if I put the vision for 2020, and it don't come until 2022. In 20 in 2022, that means at the end of 2020. That means that that goes to my next vision right. for my next year. So if it doesn't happen, then guess what? I'm not going to give up hope. Why? Because now faith is. The substance. Because when you yes. look at it, Abraham had faith. Abraham knew of the coming Messiah. All through the lineage of Abraham, everybody knew of the coming Messiah. Right. So I had to wait 2,000 years. I got my numbers off. I got them off. Okay, I'm just throwing off some <laughs> right, numbers. Okay? Right, right, right. But I had to wait 10,000 years in order to see him come. I had to wait 2,000 years in order to see him to come. Right. So what are you saying? That means that the vision of the coming Messiah, guess what? It was passed from generation to generation to generation. But what happened when it comes down to us? Because see, look, <laughs> oftentimes when God has given us vision for the house, Everything that God brings to pass is not for us in our time. It's for our children and it's for our children's children. Why? Right. Because he said, I'm going to bless you down your what? Down to your 40th generation. So if it's already down the line, that means I cannot be the one to stop the vision that God has already set destiny in. Right. Ooh, I'm going to sit down. I get excited. <laughs> I'm going to calm down now. I'm going to sit down. Right, right, yeah, right. man, when you begin to understand the thing, because see, you got to understand this. Did I break something? I heard something clean. No, you get it. You get it. But you got to understand this. Is that I need some water. I'm tired. I got some water right here. <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, me, you got to excuse me. I get excited. Because this is the one thing. Uh-huh. It wasn't me that taught me about vision. Right. It took, it, God showed someone else. Showed them the importance of vision, the power of vision. And guess what? That person taught some taught this person, that person taught this person, but then that person was the one that taught me. Right, right. And then the thing is, as James tells us, I didn't just hear how to handle vision, how to execute vision. I was a doer. Right, and so that's key. So even as you are moving into what the vision is. So so let's say, okay, we talked a lot high level of the vision. So what is it to be able to put that vision into place? It's about being able to, okay, God, what is the blueprint for my family? Mm. What is the blueprint, Lord, for my marriage? What is the direction? Where are yes. you taking us? Where are you leading us? Where are you guiding us? What do you have for us? And then it's a matter of writing that out. Type it out. Type it out. Right. So even as you're doing that, as you see it every day, as you walk past it, as you go out to work or as you come home and when you're cooking and when you're going to the bathroom, wherever you have that sitting or if you have it riding in a car with you and you're looking at that, 
there are some things that you have to do to put it in place. Yeah. So if you're saying, Lord, we want to make sure that we have effective communication in our marriage. Uh huh. There's one thing to have marriage. There's another thing to have effective communication. So you say we have to have effective communication when those situations come up where it's about to explode <laughs> and you about to go bonkers. Uh. That's a moment for you to stop for just a second to remember, okay, God, you've given me, I want to be able to have that effective communication for my marriage. Now, this is an opportunity for me to either die to self mm. so that we can make sure that this is going in the way that you would have us to do, or we could just stop and just be like, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> it's whatever, Slim. We're going to have that as, as the same on the vision again next year. Right. So there are some things that you have to do to be able to put into place. Right. And then there are some things that are only going to be able to manifest over time. You know, I got one. How about this one? How about, because a lot of people tends to put, I want to be debt free in the vision. Ooh, yes. So now, how can you be debt free, but you don't want to go through the part of learning how to budget? Right. Because now, if I don't know how to budget, now I'm not being a good steward of the increase. So, right, cause right, remember, right, 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 if right. I, if I don't get a raise, right? Right. If I don't get a raise, they have what is called COLA increase for some, for some jobs. For they, the government they, workers. <laughs> they give a COLA <laughs> increase. And so, if you get a COLA increase, that's still an increase on your wages. Right. So, you mean to tell me that if I don't handle the wages with stewardship, and not, and, and instead of paying my bills off, I go get all this lavish other stuff. No. So now, right, how, right, 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 so right. now, how can I assume, how, then basically, I find myself in the same place. Because now, there's something that God is just going to tell you, no. Right. If you can't, you can't say, hey, God, show me this, I'll show you, but then you go your own way. Right. But see, that's the thing that we deal with in everything. Everything. Because we ask God, God, how do I deal, how do I deal with this? God, how do you want me to put, how do you want me to put this laptop together? How do you want me to put, how do you want me to word this? But right. see, oftentimes we think that God is not the God that would deal with the minute thing. You got to understand, everything about you concerns him. Right. But the thing is, we're not willing to keep him first. Right. We say it, but we're not willing to keep him first. Because my thing is, it's like, okay, God, I've gotten paid. How should, how should I ration out the, the, what you have given me? Right. And see, oftentimes we find ourselves broke. Why? Because understand this, not that, no, I won't say broke, we find ourselves poor. The thing is, we find ourselves, understand, poor is not a condition, it's a mindset. It's a mindset, And so yes. understand that poor means I am constantly passing over, over opportunities, opportunities repeatedly. repeatedly. So if I constantly, if I constantly pass over opportunities repeatedly, how many times God is going to continue to bring the opportunities until I see it? Right. But then we right, wait until right, we right, get right. to our last dime, and then it's woe is me. Right. Now we're looking for God to send somebody by to hand me a buck. Understand this. I'm not saying that's everybody's case, but you know who you are. Right. And so right, the right. thing is, is that come out of a poor man's a poor man's mentality. Right. And get wait a minute, I got I got that one. And get into a rich man mentality. Right. But what is what is that? Because when you look at it, God don't talk about riches, he talk about wealth. Wealth. Right. Understand that wealth passes on to generations. To generations, <clears throat> yep. Riches, they can die with you. Right, right. But wealth continues on. Right. So understand the God that we serve is a continuation God. Right. So the thing is, is that what God are you serving? Are you serving a God that where you only see his hand, so therefore you don't recognize the wealth? Because one thing is wealth don't hold. You can't hold wealth in your hand. You can hold riches in your hand, but you can't hold wealth in your hand. Right. Wealth comes by the favor of God, and that's by me getting to the face of God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i'm telling you the face of god is where it is the Ooh. face of god is where it is i'm not saying that marriage is perfect i'm not even saying our marriage is perfect but what it is is we are honoring god and everything <laughs> it ain't where it used to be hallelujah everything that we're doing and we're saying and we're not coming to you in a hypocritical standpoint listen we've been to the bottom oh and we, we've been to the bottom nobody could have told us we this are, was where we were going to be five years ago climbing. nobody could have told us that just god. and man. the more and the more we get closer and closer to god the more and the more we lean and we glean unto him the more and the more we seek after his face the more 
more and the more he breathes over mm, us. Right. The more and the more he changes us. Right. And then we're able to be able to come and say, hey, this is the blueprint. Right. This is the blueprint. Right. And see, that's the thing. I had to find my acronym because my acronym for rich, for rich. meaning realize it can happen. Realize it can happen. But if you can't realize it can happen, then you're going to continue to pass over opportun- right. opportunities repeatedly. Right. And so that's the thing because under the, we did not just get here because we were so wonderful. Right. Not at all. <laughs> we got here because we realized we needed God so bad. Right. Because the thing is, I didn't need God for my marriage. I needed God for myself. Right. And that's what we have to do. We have to seek God for ourselves first. I'm telling you. Like, I don't know. I can't. This is like a salvation I had, right I here. had to seek God Come for to myself. Come just to because Jesus right there now. was so much about me. And everything about me was pouring out into the marriage. Mm. My fears, my insecurities, my hatred, my um, everything about me was falling over into the marriage. Mm-hmm. And so it wasn't a matter of I could have kept God, kept asking God, Lord, change him. Lord, touch him. Lord, this, Lord, that. Lord, Move this. him, Lord. Get him do, all of this, <laughs> do all of this stuff. Had he left... Sorry, I'm spitting everywhere. Had it's all right. Left? Just wipe it in. It's all right. It's clean. <laughs> Had he left, I would have still been stuck with the same issues. Ooh, with so the same it was issue. about me. Come on now. It was about me. And then we got some, some comments and stuff coming in. So we said, you can't be lazy. You have to keep working the vision to make sure that it's being achieved. And you're right. Uh-huh. You're right. And then Peter says 2020. 2020, I'm telling y'all, is the year. Uh, hey, step listen. into and, and and before you even don't wait until January first to step into it. Come on, start remove, it now. Remove every distraction. Remove all those different things, all those eliminators, all those excuses. Remove all that crap now. But see, but that's so a- as you step in, you already in position to move and God, like you can just be running through that thing. Come on now, I say not, but that's the thing. You can't you can't say I'm gonna make the change today and wake up and still be the same way. Right. Because if you gotta first make the change in your mind. It's a mindset. It's a mindset and it because starts with you. It starts with you because listen, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The mouth speaks. Yep. So uh, this is this is how the Lord showed me at one point because one, we have dominion power. Right. So that gives us power over the adversary. Right. And right. so the only thing that the adversary can do is that he can only mess with your mind. Right. So if I already know what the will of God is, if you don't know what the will of God is, it says, in all things, give thanks. Right. For this is the, the will, will of God, God concerning you. Right. So therefore, now you know what the will of God is, is that in everything, give thanks. Right. Period. Start right. there. And so now, when you now, now that you are going or giving or whatever the will of God is, is that you're blessing him regardless. So it does not matter how the enemy try to come at your mind. Because right. now when you receive what God has said versus what the enemy is showing, right. if you receive what God has said, guess what? Now it begins to move. Right. Because the thing is that the moment it penetrates the heart, it's concrete. Yeah. When it yeah, penetrates yeah. the heart, it's, it's concrete. concrete. Because that's why, because when you look at God only dealt with the heart. Right. He, he tells us to watch out for these things because these things that are not good for us, it only mess with the mind, but he don't want it to get in the heart. Right. Because once it gets in the heart, it sets a barrier and leaves him out. Right. See, oftentimes that we got to keep Christ in our heart. Right. We got to let him take a full residence in our heart. of the total heart. The thing that I look at, I'm not a heart surgeon, but I come to understand that the heart has separate chambers. Right. But oftentimes, the thing is that we love God only in one chamber. Mm-hmm. But God want to have the entire chambers. That's good. Meaning that what I let, if we allow God to fill our complete heart, it's not saying that we're not going to do no wrong because we are. Why? Because he said, for we all have sinned and come short. So therefore, we all going to have our wrong. But right. this is one thing that I love about David, that when David messed up, he didn't have no problem getting back to the feet of God, saying, God, I'm sorry. Cleanse me. Mine now, we're talking about David living in the time of the Day of Atonement because Christ hasn't came yet. Right. As much as he messed up, I'm on the mountain setting up sacrifices. God, don't take me out of this. <laughs> right. Why? Because when you look at it, because when David messed up with Bathsheba, he told him that the sword will forever be in your house. Right. 
right, right, yet, right, 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 right. even after David <laughs> fornicated and when after he committed murder, he still went back to the heart of God saying, God, I'm sorry. Right. And I'm not saying it's giving you a pass to go jack up and do things wrong. But what I'm saying is that God already know who we are even when we come to him. Right. Why? Because he's the creator of all. He's the creator of all. So you got to understand if God created you and he created me. So let me let me hit you with this one. When God created you, he created you with me in mind. Right. And God, when God created me, he created me with you in mind. Why? Because it is the real that has been taken from sure. me from my time of creation. Right. And it was implanted into you. This is just me thinking out in the awesomeness of God. Implanted into you. Why? Because he said that he that finds a wife finds I'm a good, good thing, thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Right. And see, oftentimes that when we find out, this is that, oh, this is who God set aside for me. It's my boy. It, it might be your, it <laughs> might be your boy ass. But the thing is, what? You finna tap me. Tell me slow down. What? We gotta go to commercial break. Oh, we at 650. <laughs> my bad. I was getting into it. I'm sorry, we'll have to pause, but I will continue. We have a commercial break. Thank you. I got to get used to this. for the Marriage Takeover Retreat happening on Saturday, February 15th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Your investment is only $99, where the theme is not easily broken, and we're breaking generational curses. You can register at marriagetakeover.com. This year, we are going to have Jay and Trish Cameron, Milo and Alicia Briscoe, Eric and Tamika Thompson, and you don't want to miss it. It's going to be right here in the D.C. metropolitan area in Southern Maryland. Go to, again, marriagetakeover.com to register and for more details. Again, marriagetakeover.com. Don't miss out. Today's show is being brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash marriage takeover and browse through some of the unmatched selections of the audiobooks and programs that they offer. Download a title and start listening all for free. All right, it's that easy. Just go to audibletrial.com slash marriage takeover. All right. All right. All right. We Man, are back from the commercial break. This is this is getting <laughs> this is something. We gotta get used to this. We so <laughs> understand, but understand this, and we got nine minutes. We're gonna try to wrap this thing up. Yes, indeed. But under, but understand this is that knowing what God has already created and set for you, it is for you. But right. the thing is, are you willing to work? Are you willing to put in to put in the work? That is there because if anything that's going to push you closer to God, that's going to be your spouse. Right. <laughs> because the thing is, it's like like I said, God, you gave me, you set this woman aside for me, and so that's and so that's the thing. Look at her batting her eyes, <laughs> and, and so that's the thing that we that you begin to understand because just because of where God is taking you, that don't mean I need to hold you up. Because oftentimes I had to tell her, listen, because now you're on the street. Don't don't worry about me. Because God is going to make sure that you don't leave me. Right. right. When I say leave me, that you take it all off. Because one thing about it, because of your desire is for me to be with you. Guess what? God is going to put me through the ringer. Right. So that I can get my eyes focused on him and just jump into play. Right. Because that's what has happened to us. Because as God took me up, I had I brought her on up. And then God accelerated her. And I was like, Jesus. <laughs> Why are you leaving me behind here? I right, listen. Let me go. Let me go. But then my steps came here before I reached to where God have us on the same kill. Right, right. Listen, we want to thank you guys so much for joining us. I, I definitely want to before we you, end you, our you, show. Get early. We got I know, five we, minutes listen, left. That's what we have, what we're we have seven minutes left <laughs> at the show. But here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to forget Reverend Ray Rose. Thank you, thank you, thank you. When I tell you that the man vision spoke, he spoke life, didn't he? And uh, bringing the vision to pass, we wouldn't be here today had it not been for Ray Rose, the bishop. <laughs> I know for him seeking God, for him being able to listen to God, to honor God for us. Did, what two years ago? 
Yeah, it's too, wow. Two wait, years wait, ago. This is two years. He said, hey, listen, can I get you? It was a little over two years ago now. Yeah, it was you know, September I, I want you guys to come on the show and talk about marriage. And we were like, what? Uh, you sure? <laughs> what? You we're not the ones, guys. We're and not so the ones. to be able to see how that turned into one thing and then turned into, you know, the marriage takeover show and then to the podcast. And you can find, we just want to thank you so much, Reverend Ray, for yeah. being able to honor God, seek after God, hear God, and now to be able to see what God is doing in right. us, what he has said all along. And hey, don't also uh, uh, what's Reverend um, uh, Pastor uh, uh, that brought us, she gonna bust me in my head because I forgot. Pastor Kanoe! Yes. We love you, Pastor Kanoe. Had it not been for us even coming to your show, um, it, it was awesome. Yeah. And so had we not been invited in October to be able to come into your chat and chew show. It was an open door. We thank you so much, Pastor Kanoe, for just even being a vessel and an instrument for God to be able to open that door and to right. make that way. Right. So we love you. Thank you so much. And and, and I'm, I mean, we have so many thank yous. I, don't I know. Wanna, our I don't church, wanna, I don't Rainbow say, Worship Center, I'm to tell you our leaders, our members, our I, followers on Marriage yes. Takeover. Thank you guys so I, much for making it. I have to. I have to. It is. I have to send out a big shout out to um, uh, pastors Charles and uh, Sandra, Sandra Gannis. I know. Thank because, you guys man, so much. I'm telling you, even when when nobody showed up, they were they there. were there. And so I thank God for um, for people that believe in the vision that God has given us and so we're grateful we are we're so grateful, grateful. Uh, so don't and everybody forget about, so don't yeah go don't ahead forget about the marriage retreat yes. you guys it's going to be right here in the dmv um we want to see you there we got pastor jay cameron we got alicia and my and um alicia and my <laughs> Thank you. Even, Milo Briscoe. Milo Briscoe. <laughs> and yeah. we're going to be in the house. Pastor we, Jay Cameron and Pastor Trish. Jay Cameron uh, and Trish. Trish Listen, Cameron, huh? Our desire, our passion, <laughs> our love is the heartbeat to be able to help other marriages, right. to help other couples. So if you are engaged, if you are married, if it's complicated, you're trying to really figure it out. Come on out. Figure, you guys come on out. We want to see you. We want to be able to pour into you. Right. And, uh, That's all. We just want to be able to be a blessing to the marriages. And then um, also follow us. We got a podcast. Follow us on the podcast. And if you have questions or suggestions, make sure that you send that over to marriagetakeover at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. We oh, want to see you. Just we go to the love website on you. and send it through the website. And, or go to the website, marriagetakeover.com. We want to see you. We want to love on you. All right. And <laughs> thank <laughs> you to the W. BGR Network. So, WBGR Gospel Network, we love you. Thank you so much for having us here. To the engineers who are making this. The engineers who are making this possible for us. You guys rock. We know what we was doing. Y'all kept us right in lock and step. And we're going to pray out. We got to slow her down. She gets too carried away sometimes. Go ahead and pray out. We got still got four minutes. That's, oh, that's so what we gonna, it's three minutes. Huh? Oh, three my minutes. bad. So now let's just go. And look. Merry Christmas to you guys. Oh, yes. Merry this Christmas. This is our last show before for Christmas. This, yes, that's so, right. Uh, we are, and we're praying for those who have lost a spouse or have lost a loved one during this time. I know the holiday season is the hardest when you've lost a loved one. Yes. I lost my mom. She made her transition almost... It's been 18, almost 18 years now. But the holidays okay. are so tough. 17. Um, so 17 years now, but the holidays are so tough. And so I want to just make sure that we are reaching out to you. You know that we love you know that we are praying for you. We know that it's hard, especially if you lost that loved one. Yes. So we are going to be praying for you during this holiday season. And, um, yes. Um, and so, yes, because we just want to say Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Christmas to, to all, all of you. you. Hallelujah. And, and Wait, also, we do the Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but we're grateful. So let's go pray, let's go pray us out. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we bless you. God, we give you the glory. We yes, give you honor. We give God. you praise, Father. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this broadcast. Yes, Father Lord. God, we pray now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that your word, Father, that it touched that, that individual, Father, because we come to understand that if we save one, then, God, we believe we have done our job. Yes, and so, God, Lord. we thank you for today, oh, God. Father, for that God. one that received your word and began to act on it. God, I know that you're gonna show that you're gonna show who you are through it all, Father, yes, in the name of Lord. Jesus. 
God, I pray now, God, that you continue to have your way. Yes, God, God, I ask right now, Lord, that you touch each and every vessel that was a part of this broadcast yes, and making it Lord. happen, God. Because, Lord, God. this is an open door that you have set. And so, God, we just thank you right now, God. We give you the glory. God, for each and every one of the viewers, Lord God, even yes, those Lord. that even may watch the replay, Father. God, I ask that you continue to watch over them, keep them, Father. God, yes, those that have lost a loved God. one, continue to comfort Cover their hearts, them, God. oh God. Yes, and, Lord. Father, we bless you. We give you the glory. Father, we say this prayer in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Marriage Takeover. Wait, Connect with us on Facebook at Marriage Takeover.